It is time for us to talk about Zelda. Oh, hope you're ready. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom looks monumental and massive in comparison to Breath of the Wild. In fact, this new map of Hyrule Lords over its predecessor allowing you to now take to the air and explore lands that occupy the sky. Now, you'll also be able to explore subterranean areas, rocky tunnels, and caves. It really seems as though there's nowhere that's off limits in this new expansive world for Link to explore. But just because there's this beautiful, oftentimes serene world to traverse in Tears of the Kingdom, does that mean make it better than its predecessor? Like sometimes, you know, a larger environment doesn't necessarily equate to a perfect playground in which the player can have fun in. It could just mean extra space for you to get lost in discovering hidden gems or potentially spending countless hours trying to find out what's next for you to progress forward in the story's narrative. Now in this video, I want to take a stab at Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's open world experience, compare it to Breath of the Wild as well as cross-reference it with other games that are similar yet very different open world experiences. I've seen conversations online about how Tears of the Kingdom seems like it's just more Breath of the Wild, as if it's Breath of the Wild, but with a more polish on it. Look. Like someone put a spit shine on this bad boy. You know, it might seem that way given, you know, the fact that both games have been released on the Nintendo Switch, so not much innovation can be done in regards to graphics. It appears as though Tears of the Kingdom is a more realization of the direction, the direction the developers wanted to initially take with Breath of the Wild. Plus, it's possible to iterate on the previous foundation, even though you're working on the same hardware as the previous game. You know, it happened with GTA 4, which came out on the PS3, and GTA 5, which also originally came out on the PS3 and was exponentially larger in scale to its predecessor with improvements on graphics. But that came out towards the end of the PS3's life cycle, then got ported over to PS4, then PS5. Several years later, no, it's still going strong. We are still playing Grand Theft Auto V, unfortunately. And so is Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is great. It still holds up to this day. So I want us to explore how the worlds of these games interact with you, the gamer. Because in my countless hours sunken into these games, I really had to think critically about what was it that made me so interested in each of these games. Now, by the end of this video, I want us to come to a logical, cohesive conclusion as to whether or not Zelda the Tears of the Kingdom is just more of the same thing with a few added features to what we got in Breath of the Wild, or if it's something different and more. Every one of these games I'm gonna talk about in this video are unique and the reasons I enjoy them are not the same. So let's break it down. The world you live in in both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are based on exploration with this open world that lies in front of you ready for you to roam freely. Now discovery is what drives you to your next destination and you're rewarded for your curiosity. Unlike the cat that got killed by its curiosity. Good thing you're not a cat, you're a human. <laughs> Now you're rewarded with several different things, be it, you know, equipment, a special item, or an artifact. You're motivated to continue moving forward, vanquishing enemies that might pop up to impede your progression. Just slash them and use your shield. Use your shield, always use it. Now the fantasy world in Tears of the Kingdom lends itself well to this, and it's a far cry away from what you'd experience in, say, GTA V. Now I'm gonna briefly compare both Zelda games and their open world aspects to GTA V just to kind of, you know, break down how each approaches the open world concept in gaming and how it's a lot more satisfying in Tears of the Kingdom. Now let's first start with exploration in these open world environments. Now GTA V isn't exactly based on exploration. Now while that is in fact something that is open for you to do in this massive map of Los Santos, the world you live in there is more so based on immersion and realism. Like sure, you're free to roam and explore, but you can also just settle in, purchase a fancy home, and a few vehicles and commit crimes in the law-abiding city that punishes you for taking your curiosity a bit too far. Now GTA 5 is an open world that's predicated upon your interactions with your surroundings, one that'll continue with or without your involvement. 
The Tears of the Kingdom's open world needs you to interact with it. As the lone hero in this world, you're the one who triggers the important moments that can quite literally shake the foundations of the world you dwell in. Now, Breath of the Wild is quite similar in that aspect. The world interactions in these video games, GTA V and both Zelda games, are unique and dynamic in their own ways. The Tears of the Kingdom looks at you as the main hero of the story, so the open space laid out in front of you exists only for you to explore and understand earth its secrets. Just dig them up. You know, you just got to dig them up. Now, the open space laid out in front of you in GTA 5 exists only for you to play around in, triggering some sort of action that'll lead to a reaction. Mostly negative reactions, though those cops are gonna get you. Now the GTA games and their open worlds exist for you to manipulate however you see fit. All right, now let's hop on over to some of the foundational differences between the two Zelda games, which I think those that have played both extensively can attest to there being quite a few. Now Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are both stunningly beautiful. And while there's so much for you to do in both games, there's customizable vehicles and flying contraptions for you to take advantage of in tears, in tears, and many of them are important for you to progress the story. Now, the world contained in Tears of the Kingdom has an, an air of mystery that just supersedes its predecessor and peering down at the world below you when you're so high up makes you wonder what lies below in a region, you know, you've never actually explored. Like, what's down there? I kinda wonder. Hmm, it looks beautiful and serene for sure. Now, there's honestly no open world like Tears of the Kingdom that I've ever personally played that's drawn me in based on the sheer size and multitude of things you're able to do in it. Like, I honestly love more linear games, but you know, there's just so much to do here that it's kind of just honestly relaxing to play at times. You know, it's like queuing up, you know, Lo-Fi Girl having that play in the background while I get some writing done, which is exactly how, you know, I came up with this particular video idea. I, I just had Lo-Fi Girl playing in the background and I was just like, you know what? I, I should be playing Tears of the Kingdom to relax a little bit, but then I was writing. It's very confusing. I want a game while I'm writing. That's weird. I have two hands. Now, traveling through the air has been significantly upgraded here than what you've experienced in Breath of the Wild, as it's more than just, you know, gliding around to your next destination. They had to pretty much upgrade things. Otherwise, it'd be kind of hard to explore some of the airborne regions of the open map. Like, how the hell are you going to get up there? You just going to climb? No, you can fly now. Yeah. Now, I love the option or ability to fly freely in these types of open world games. You know, it's it's one of the main forms of travel I, I used in Horizon Forbidden West, and, and I even used the Crucible Wings uh, for the Tarnish mod in Elden Ring. Now, that's not as robust as Horizon or even Tears, but at least it's there for you. It's more of a, you know, a gliding mechanic than anything else, honestly. But the open air traversal is one of the more significant changes or upgrades in Tears of the Kingdom. And it's one of the many things that makes the game so damn refreshing to play and manages to make you feel as though, you know, you're experiencing something brand new that's separate from Breath of the Wild. And I know there's that technique in Breath of the Wild where, you know, you can use two metal objects like a mine cart from Hyrule Castle and a metal block to lift the cart off the ground, but it just seems like a very impractical way to travel through the air. But we were met with that particular limitation in Breath of the Wild, and of course, folks like my main man's Mr. Cheese found ways to cheese the system and skirt by the laws of physics. Wow. Now, the natural implementation we see in Tears of the Kingdom is a way better way for our peace of mind when it comes to flying. And it's ultimately one of the many different things in Tears of the Kingdom, which brings me to my next point. Tears of the Kingdom being nothing more than a glorified Breath of the Wild DLC expansion pack ultimate edition. This next discussion, honestly, will definitely uh, tear the viewers apart one way or the other. You're going to get torn apart. It's going to tear my kingdom apart. Tears of the... 
Yeah. So I've seen uh, this making the rounds on the internet about how Tears is just a glorified DLC for Breath of the Wild. And I think those who've played it uh, can can put that argument to bed and say that Tears is much more than what you might have seen in, in trailers. Like Breath of the Wild was the foundation which gave way to what we see in Tears of the Kingdom. And with that, it's been expounded upon to create an even larger world for gamers to explore and experience. Now, some uh, basic philosophy here for for, uh, you viewers out there if you have similar 3d models sound effects asset packs somewhat similar ruins and forests what you're experiencing might seem familiar to what you've experienced prior but it most definitely isn't the same and I want to stress that because, you know, I'd hate for some people to make the decision to wait to buy this game because it looks exactly like its predecessor. Now, this is Nintendo people we're talking about, okay? One of the big three. Now, there's no world where they'd simply just give rabid fans, Zelda fans, more of the same without iterating and expanding upon what came before. Now, one way to kind of look at this, though, um, for, for you, if you are if you are looking at this, is uh, uh, if you love loved Breath of the Wild, then you'll probably enjoy Tears of the Kingdom. Like, it's more of that. But it's also far more than that. Believe it or not, it's far more. Now, I've also been big on narrative-driven games, but in the first Zelda, Breath of the Wild, the story came second to the exploration aspect. I'm surprisingly enjoying the story in Tears of the Kingdom more so than I did in Breath of the Wild, believe it or not. Now, I won't go too far into it here because, you know, I think it's it's worth taking uh, the time to experience it for yourself if you've been a longtime fan of the Zelda series of games. I want you to enjoy the story. But if you feel like, you know, the last thing you'd want to do is go on an excursion to Hyrule, visiting locations that feel awfully similar, that won't happen. I promise you, there's enough of a difference that you're bound to have a fulfilling adventure in this new landscape. Now, one way to kind of compare it is with one of my other favorite video game uh, franchises, and that's Horizon. Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West's maps. Now, while unlike Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which both take place in Hyrule, those two games take place in different parts of a post-apocalyptic United States that somewhat feel and look similar, with the second game completely eclipsing the first in sheer scale and new features. Now, while Zero Dawn takes place in parts of Utah, Colorado, and Arizona, Forbidden West is in California. The environments have similar elements that are reminiscent of one another, but there are distinct differences that make the experience of each vastly different. So the best way to kind of approach Tears of the Kingdom is with a, a similar mindset as you would uh, the Horizon games. More of the same of what you like. And if you like it, you're gonna love it. Yes. So to answer the question we started this video with, is Tears of the Kingdom just more of Breath of the Wild? The answer is yes, it is. But it's also more than just that. It's more of what you'd expect from a sequel that takes place in the same world. It is. And if you truly enjoyed Breath of the Wild, this is a welcomed return to the series with a slew of additions that'll keep you occupied till we finally get an announcement of new hardware from Nintendo because you know it's coming. It's coming soon. There, there's, there's like no way we're not gonna get a new Switch or a new Nintendo something, some hardware because the Switch is looking mighty Mighty old these days. I had to dust the freaking dust off of mine. I used a duster to dust dust off of the damn dusty switch that I own. It's time, Nintendo. It's time to catch up with Xbox and PlayStation already. What are you doing? You're just living in this in this freaking handheld world that you've created yourselves. Jeez, get out of it. Come on now. Steam decks are way better than you. We need hardware. I want a console sitting next to my other consoles. Anyways, I digress. Ooh, boy. I got lost in the sauce there. Anyway, would love to know know what your experience with Tears of the Kingdom uh, has been like if you are indeed playing it. I want to know. Let's talk about it below. And shout out to all of the members here on the channel. You all keep me very motivated to keep creating content like this. And yeah, until the next video, I guess I'll, I will see you here and I will see you over there when you decide to when I decide to play. if you have watched all the way to this part of the video I want you to drop a sword emoji uh, along with your comment a sword emoji 
I don't even know if that is. There's got to be a sword emoji. All right. I think that's good. We're going to stop. We're going to stop recording now. I'm going to I'm going to stop the record. But in order to do that, I got to I got to walk over there, guys. I got to I got to walk over there. My, my editor's probably he's having fun right now. I'm sure. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I see you, Cap. Don't act like I don't see you. I see you when you're sleeping and I know when you're awake.